Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. Yes. So look, here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Look, look. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the multiverse. Greatest show in the Dagon multiverse. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Whole thing. Whole thing. Whole thing. <laughs> hey, show in the multiverse. And look, we have a great show for you. Bang! Today. All right. Have a great show today. <clears throat> Hope everyone had a great weekend. Yes, yes. We had a little retrace there on Sunday, huh? A little retrace. And then today, what? I think the Bitcoin was pushing 50 a little bit. I think it even it just flirted and tipped in a little bit. Just just a little flirt. Just eeps. Right? Like, here's the 50 line right here. Just eeps. Eeps. <laughs> just a little flirtation. All right. Don't worry. We'll get there when we get there. We'll get there pretty soon. All right. So, anyways, today's show, we have greatness. All right. So, first story, bang. We're going to talk about Canada's second Bitcoin ETF launched today by Evolve. Bang. Oh, so yeah, today's investment vehicle day. And then uh, Facebook, and I'll show you that. So, that's one ETF. Uh, that's an investment vehicle. Well, that one's actually occurring. And then NYDG, NYDIG, Bitcoin. <laughs> has put in a Bitcoin ETF application, which is good, you know, especially with Gary Gensler coming online and everything. But what's especially good about this is Morgan Stanley is part of this one. Uh, uh, it's not just a bunch of crypto miscreants, but we've got the traditional big boys coming in on this one. So, uh, wow, man, I mean, I'm expecting approval. And then finally, DM, close to launch. So DM, remember, there's this thing. Uh, Facebook has this money, right? It was called Libra. Well, they changed the name to DM. So this is about the, this is the Facebook money story. This is about Facebook money, right? So <laughs> DM is close to launch. And they have this whole payment structure. So we're going to read about it. And then we're going to do the usual shout outs and daily summary. So look. Let's proceed how we proceed with a bang. Yes. yes. Bang. What we got? Yeah, see, Bitcoin's just flirting. Flirting right here in the in the 449. All right. What we got? Price of Bitcoin, $49,627. Well, that's not very motivational. You're just yawning on air. <laughs> All right. And when I left you on Saturday, we were at... Hold on, maybe I'll just get a sip of fuel. <clears throat> Wake the fuck up for a little second here. Hold on. All right. So $49,627. When I left you on Saturday, we're at $47,292. So we have gone up. What's that? Uh, 2000. 2000. Three hundred and thirty-five bucks, two thousand three hundred and thirty-five dollars since Saturday. Yay! All right, look, look. <clears throat> Let's look at the top ten. Top ten of the day, brothers. You know who it is. Usual suspects. <laughs> top ten Bitcoin, but a little bit different order. Well, uh, let's go right here. Top ten Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Polkadot, Cardano, XRP, Binance Coin, 
Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Chainlink. Now look at who's number four and five. Polkadot Cardano pushing down the Bitcoin. I mean the uh, XRP. Well, not pushing it down. I guess they're taking it over. They took over the the number four spot and number five spot. Yes. All right. And let's look at the market moves of the day. Usual story, single digits up, single digits down. XRP, 11% down. Single digits up, single digits down. Hey, Vol, what happened to you, buddy? 14% down. Single digits up, single digits down. Iota. Come on. 11% down. Oh, we chain you too? Wow. I want a little bitty piece of candy. <laughs> 11 down. Well, you have to always remember this, guys. So, so, so don't, uh, hold on. Maybe I shouldn't say it all like that. Look, don't be sad, remember, because look at the, look, look, just remember how much it was up. All these were up in the past two weeks, right? Yeah, like over hundreds of percents, right? So, Everything has to retrace. You have to retrace, you know. A little bit of profit taking, a little retracing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I shouldn't probably bring it up. I don't want to freak people out. Anyway, single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. All right. So, yeah, multiple double multiple double digits down, but low double digits down. But, yeah, well, most of those were triple digits up last week, right? So, uh now, keep it all in perspective, folks. Keep it all in perspective. All right. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because it is on sale. Bah! Durr. All right. So here it is. Here it is. Here's the double-digit losses. Now, yes, they're double-digit losses, but uh, they were triple-digit gains last week, right? So keep it in perspective. All right. Top 10 losers, Reserve Rights, Elrond, Solana, Ontology, Phantom, Ave, Sushi Swap, Synthetics, The Graph, and Algorand. Let's see who made money today. Bah! What we got? Yeah, the gains were skimpy today. The gains were skimpy. The gains were skimpy. All right, top 10 gainers, Pancake Swap, Cello, Energy Web Token, Terra, TechCred, Polkadot, Quant, Nexo, Monero, and Hedge Trade. All right, let's see what the total mark cap is. All right, total mark cap, total mark cap is 1.490. Trillion dollars. And when I left you on Saturday, we we're at $1.469 trillion. So we've gone up. Uh, 0.020 trillion dollars, I guess is how you say that. All right. Bah. And then the 24 hour volume is 181.2 billion dollars. And when I left you on Saturday, we're at $206.6 uh, billion in market caps. So we've gone down uh, $25.4 billion. All right. Let's keep it moving. Look. All right. Let's check these out. So, yeah, so it's ETF day. Bang. So first, we're going to talk about an ETF that has actually been approved. <laughs> So, Evolve wins second Canadian Bitcoin ETF. <clears throat> As Ontario regulator approves the application. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone wants to get ETFs and uh, investment vehicles going before the Americans start just unleashing on everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, this is the second one this year. Actually, I think it's the second one in the past 30 days, right? We just read that other one. I don't know. It might have even just been last week. All right. So, 
Uh, let me get a sip and we shall proceed. So again, the whole importance of an ETF. They show up on soccer moms and dads trading accounts. Institutional investors that don't want to own Bitcoin but want to make money off the price of it can buy these. All right, so everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Like I told you, not everyone wants to buy Bitcoin, right? They don't want to own it and custody it and all this crap. But they want to make money off the price action of it, right? And so, you know, like I told you, I've said it before, you know, that's called a derivative. You know, you derive, it's uh, the asset you buy derives its price from the underlying asset, right? So, like I've told you before, I'm a Forex trader. Uh, I, I make money in the markets from yen, pounds, euros, pesos, rubles, Turkish lira, whatever. Yeah, but I don't want to own that shit. I just want to make the money, right, and get paid in American dollars, right? And so that's called a derivative, and that's what people want. A lot of, a lot, most people just want that, right? Most hedge funds, institutions, all that, they don't want actual, you know, Peter Schiff, yeah, he's a big gold trader. Yeah, he. Does, I bet you the man doesn't even own a brick of gold, right? <laughs> right? He makes money from the underlying move of the gold. And so what else is good about an ETF? It's, it's so easy. Soccer mom and dad, it pops up on their, their Charles Schwab, their E-Trade account. I mean, this is Canadian, so it's the same thing as America. They have, well, TD is from Canada, TD Bank. If you're an American, you know that bank, TD Bank. Well, that stands for Toronto Dominion Bank. That's where my mother used to work. I told you when she was a bankster. And uh, and uh, so, yeah, so TD Ameritrade here, well, it's just uh, they have their trading things over there up in Canada. And Soccer Mom and Dad can now press a button, boop, and get exposure to the price of Bitcoin without having to cut and paste and KYC and ledger nanos and all this nonsense all right all right so let's check it out north america's second bitcoin fund exchange traded fund received regulatory approval on tuesday offering another potential entry point for institutional investors to access digital assets uh less than three weeks after filing a preliminary prospectus for a bitcoin etf Evolve Funds Group, Inc., announced Tuesday that its fund has been approved. Holy, it was only three weeks? Look at that. Less than three weeks after filing. Holy, they're just fast-tracking these then. Here in America, it's 90 days. Well, it doesn't have to be, but... Anyways, that's fast-tracking right there. Less than three weeks. Uh, they announced Tuesday that its fund has been approved. By the Ontario Securities Commission or the OSC. The ETF has two ticker symbols EBIT for Canadian dominated units and EBIT.U for US denominated units. Ah, oh, so Americans can even come get a piece? True. EBIT is said to provide unhedged exposure to the daily price movement of Bitcoin and Canadian in Canadian dollars whereas EBITU provides exposure to the daily price movements in U.S. dollars. Notably, the fund will track price data using CF Benchmark's Bitcoin reference rate, which aggregates data from several Bitcoin USD markets into a one-day benchmark index. So, right, they're taking, their price mar they're taking their prices of Bitcoin from a bunch of exchanges, aggregating it, and that becomes the price. That's like that. That's what our guys tried to do here, here in America. The Winklevoss kids, uh, Bitwise, uh, Vanak. There's a bunch, a couple others. Phoenix something, I think they were called as well. Right? That's what they told the SEC they were going to do. Here in America, the Security and Exchange Commission, they said, look, we're going to get the price of Bitcoin from a bunch of exchanges, and then that'll be our price. And the SEC was like, no. Wow. As you can see. Yes. The Canadians are being much more <clears throat> amendable to this whole thing. 
So an updated prospectus submitted to the OSC in on Frida outlines the fund's investment objective. The Evolve Fund's investment objective is to provide holders of units with exposure to the daily price movements of the U.S. dollar price of Bitcoin while experiencing minimal tracking error by utilizing the benefits of the creation and redemption process. To achieve this goal, the Evolve Fund will invest in a long-term holdings of Bitcoin purchased through Gemini Newstar LLC and other platforms. The perspective was filed under a passport system which allows the fund to be accessed in all of Canada's 10 provinces and three territories. Shui Chung, CEO of CF Benchmarks, told Cointelegraph that the Evolve ETF has developed a true first, giving investors an easy to understand product that is available through their existing brokers. See, through their existing brokers, your TD Ameritrade, your Charles Schwab account, exactly. That gives them ownership to Bitcoin of Bitcoin, right? Without having to actually buy it. So Chung continued, by using the regu regulated Bitcoin reference rate from CF benchmarks, the ETF tracks the value of Bitcoin and because its structure allows daily creation and redemption of ETF shares, investors aren't forced to pay soaring premiums in the secondary market. So as you guys know, uh, here in America, we have, um, it's that one fucking, it's that company called, uh, Right, they bought all those bitcoins, man. Uh, what's the name of that thing? Anyways, and people have to pay like premium, right? So some so, sometimes they have to pay hundreds of times the cost of the bitcoin already, and so you're not gonna have to do that with this. What's the name of that? Grayscale, grayscale. Yeah, that thing, grayscale. Anyway, so the Evolve Fund is the second Bitcoin ETF to be approved by Canadian securities regulators this month. The purpose Bitcoin ETF received approval last week, becoming the first physically settled North American ETF. But, so, an ETF-style product from 3IQ was approved in Canada last year and is currently listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. However, unlike the Evolve ETF, the EIQ Fund doesn't continually issue new shares. All right, so... Bah, there we go. Brand new ETF, brand new regulated investment vehicle, which means the hedge fund boys, the banksters, all of them can come and play with it. And uh, uh, good for us, you know, an ETF like this, this company has to actually buy the Bitcoins and hold them. So as long as the ETF is around, well, they're not going to be selling the Bitcoins in it, right? So. That creates scarcity, uh, thus helping us make money. All right, let's move on. Buy MYDIG files for U.S.-based Bitcoin ETF with Morgan Stanley on board. So for those of you who've been here, you know we've been watching how many ETFs. The Winklevoss kids tried twice <laughs> for an ETF. Uh, Bitwise, uh, I just named a bunch of them, a bunch of companies Um who else, man? Uh, I don't even remember all the names, but they're all denied. They all got denied here. And so the NYDIG is going to give it another shot, applying with the SEC for a uh, for a Bitcoin ETF. But this time, Morgan Stanley is a part of this thing. And so um, you know that our new SEC chairman is Gary Gensler. Yeah, well, he used to play with Morgan Stanley and those boys back in the days. He used to be a market master. Um, then he became a market regulator. Then he became a blockchain teacher. Couldn't get better than that. Can't get better than that. And so um, he knows Morgan Stanley uh, uh, knows what the rules and regs are. Um, let's see. Let's see. All right. God, holy man, I'm so tired right now. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this right now. It's 11.30 at night. Actually, I was going to go to sleep, but then I was like, ah, let me just do this now. Or else this will come on at like 5 in the morning. All right. So let's just try to get a little fuel and wake up. Ah, so this is great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Let us check it out. Bitcoin ETF.
So, the New York Digital Investment Group, or NYDIG, has submitted paperwork with the United States Security Exchange Commission to launch a new Bitcoin exchange traded fund. So, all right. We have a new filing for a Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. NYDIG filed a form S1 registration statement for a Bitcoin ETF with the SEC on Tuesday. The submission lists NYDIG Trust Company LLC as the fund's Bitcoin custodian and Morgan Stanley as an authorized participant. Bang! So, all right, so let's read. As an authorized participant, Morgan Stanley is expected to sell the shares to the public at prices that reflects the fund's assets. So do you understand? Morgan Stanley's actually going to be the one selling this shit. NYDIG is going to do the custody of it, but it's going to be Morgan Stanley's... Hold on, let, let's look, look, look. Right? NYDIG is going to do the custody, custodian, but... Uh, Morgan Stanley is the one who's going to sell the shares to the public. Yeah, well, it means, uh, well, you know, Morgan Stanley has a marketing arm. That's unlimited, right? So we, we might see commercials about this on TV or something even soon or something, maybe. So as an authorized participant, Morgan Stanley is expected to sell the shares to the public at prices that reflect the fund's assets, supply and demand and underlying market conditions. The shares will trade, oh, and that's the other thing, the shares will trade on the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA Exchange, under a yet to be determined ticker symbol. So, we'll see what the ticker symbol is, but this is gonna be on the New York Stock Exchange. Wow, if it's approved. If it's approved by the SEC. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. If approval is acquired, well then, we'll see this on the New York Stock Exchange. So. According to the prospectus, the prospectus summary, uh, the trust investment objective is to reflect the performance of the price of Bitcoin, less the expenses of the trust's operations. The trust will not seek to reflect the performance of any benchmark or index. It continues, in seeking to achieve its investment objective, the trust will hodl Bitcoin. So these guys are going to hodl it. So taking them off the market, holding them to sell this thing, thus creating scarcity, thus, back, price of Bitcoin flies. Well, it's not going to fly just off this one thing, but what I mean is just with all of these guys, in, in this is what I was talking about, and this is what I talked about with Fidelity, like when Fidelity and these big companies take these things off the market, yeah, well, that's going to create mass scarcity. I mean, that's why we flew last year. Well, and we're in the middle of flying now. That's why the whole party started last year. After the OCC told the banksters, all right, it's good to custody. That was the signal to the whole world. Oh, okay. The Americans are coming for real. And that's when we started to see regular corporations holding it just in reserve, like that Elon Musk shit. But before Elon, way before Elon, uh, we, we, we saw that all last year, right? And... Uh, Driving up the prices, driving up the prices, and so creating scarcity, driving up the prices. And so um, uh, and so the same with these investment vehicles, these trusts and these funds. Well, they have to take the Bitcoins off the market and put them into the fund. Yeah, then they got to hodl it. As long as the fund is there, well, they got to have the Bitcoin in it, right? So those Bitcoins are never going to go anywhere, right? They're never going to get sold. And so um, that creates scarcity. Um, yeah, you're never going to see those Bitcoin again, you know, maybe your grandchildren or something. I don't know if the fund ever breaks down or something. I don't know, but all right. So, but probably never, <laughs> um, NYDIG has been highly active in the crypto space as it seeks to provide more institutional exposure to digital assets like Bitcoin in November and December, 2020, the company raised 150 million through two separate cryptocurrency investment funds. NYDIG was granted a bit license by the New York State Department of Financial Services, the NYDFS. Uh, Stone Ridge 
NY Digs parent company is one of the largest institutional holders of Bitcoin. So the quest for a Bitcoin ETF has been elusive. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. At least in the United States, where several fund issuers have tried unsuccessfully to get regulatory approval. That was that motherfucker Jay Clayton who was running the place. Jay Clayton was running the place. Trump's fucking boy. Oh, yeah, well. Now we got competent leadership. Yeah, Gary Gensler. Gary Bang Gensler. Yes, that's his middle name is Bang. <laughs> He's about to take over soon. Baby, baby. We should have some good news by the end of the year. So, uh, the quest for a Bitcoin ETF has been elusive, at least in the U.S., <laughs> where several fund issuers have tried unsuccessfully to get regulatory approval. Canada re recently approved the first publicly traded Bitcoin ETF in North America, allowing institutional investors to access BTC investments directly without derivatives. Bye! Yeah, so, there we go, folks. So, uh, this is a, 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 an application for the brothers who've been here with me, who've, who've been here with me. We saw the SEC shoot down ETF after ETF, after ETF, after ETF, after ETF, right? And so now we're the, the, the SEC is going to be under new management. And uh, like I said, Gary Gensler, he actually taught blockchain at MIT. So, uh, expect favorable, favorable regulations coming out of the SEC. And if not, well, then we're fucked. Because if not Gary Gensler, then I don't know who. All right. Don't worry. We will. We'll get, we'll get favorable regulation. Don't worry. I'm just being a dick. Of course we will. The guy, you know, the guy's an MI, the guy's a blockchain master. All right, guys. So, let's, uh. We'll keep our eyes on it like we do around here for all the ETF applications in America. And, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Bang! DM gets closer to launch as Fireblocks and first introduced new payment infrastructure. So, uh, it was a slow news day, so that's the only reason I'm really reading this. I would have just probably told you about this instead of reading it. But So, DM, that's that Facebook Libra coin, and they changed the name to DM. And... Well, it looks like they're building a whole. All right, so let me read this. Let's read the byline. Fireblocks and First Digital Asset Group have developed a seamless connection to DM, allowing financial institutions to, to access the emerging payment network. The platform is still waiting. Hold on, Shamari, calm down. <laughs> is still awaiting. Regulatory approval before it can launch. But they have a whole... Look at this. They have a whole payment network that they've built out. Yo, guys. Facebook and those guys, they've been they have been back there brewing this bad boy up for a while, right? All right. All right, let me get a sip and then we'll read. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I forgot all about this thing, actually. Because remember, it was supposed to come out last June. Right, and then it didn't, and then just nothing. There was just nothing about it. <clears throat> well, it sounds like from this, anyways, it sounds like they're all systems go on this. Facebook is still going to do this thing. So, well, pending regulatory approval. So let's see. So the DM Association is progressing toward launch with a new technical upgrade that reportedly allows more financial institutions to connect with the payment network. So like banks and shit are going to be connected right to this thing. Uh, crypto security specialist Fireblocks and First Digital Assets Group, a DM payment provider, announced Tuesday that they've developed a secure wallet and infrastructure that allows financial institutions to fa facilitate transactions on the DM network. Founded in 2017, First Digital Asset Group enables merchants and other institutions 
to accept and process both DM and stablecoin payments. The DM network appears ready to begin onboarding new clients, provided they qualify as a virtual asset service provider, or VASP. The Financial Action Task Force defines a VASP as a business that's involved in the exchange, transfer, or safekeeping of virtual assets. The partnership between Fireblocks and FIRST is intended to accelerate the adoption of DM payments and ensure that any capable financial institution can connect to the network, according to Michael Oshalov, Fireblock CEO. Grant Goldie, CEO of FIRST, added, as custodians, wallets, exchanges, P2Ps, or PSPs, and other VA, v, VASPs prepare for the DM network, we're excited to be working with Fireblocks to deliver everything a VASP needs, from risk to on-off chain communication and liquidation. So the DM Association underwent a total rebranding in December 2020, changing its name from the Libra Association. So you guys remember, that's what I was telling you. All right, it was called Facebook Libra's thing, right? Well, now they're called DM. Uh, a project that was perceived to be closely associated with Facebook. Although Facebook did introduce Libra in 2019 and remains a key backer of DM today, the association is overseen by 27 member companies. Uh, so it's not really controlled by Facebook, all right? It's an association of other companies. While a definitive date for DM hasn't been set, the network expects to go live later this year. This will be interesting. <laughs> I'm interested to see that. Uh, as reported by the Financial Times in November 2020, DM is currently waiting for approval from the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Organization. As of February, the company was still awaiting regulatory approval. So, bang, so... They're ready to launch. They have a whole payment network. Uh, they're going to onboard a bunch of companies. All that's necessary is for the Swiss to approve it. And wow, as you can see, Switzerland, what we've been reading about, all those uh, ETPs we've been reading about, where are they? On the Swiss stock exchange, right? Switzerland is super crypto friendly. So, I don't know, let's expect, well, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, I think they're going to get approved, and we'll see how this Facebook thing works. It'll be interesting. All right. Let's see if it was right, because everyone is saying either it's going to you know, take over the world, settle down, or, it, or it's going to be a nothing burger. Mm, we'll see. I think it'll be somewhere in the middle, you know. All right. Let's move on. Bang. What do you got? Bidam. Love it. Let's see you Bang. Grunge double, grunge double. Love it. Let's see you Bang. Lorna, all in downs. Look, look, girl. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. What's she talking about? Polygon. Previously, Matic. What are they saying? We're excited to announce that Graph Protocol is launching on Polygon. Developers can now build and publish native subgraphs using the Graph's hosted service, allowing dApps to directly consume organized data from the Polygon POS chain. All right. Great. Bah! Good stuff. All right, let's see what we got here. Crypto astrology. A curious mind exploring cryptocurrency ups and downs based on their transits in the past and predictions for the future. Well, all right, brother. Love the see, brother. Bah! Raj Verma. Crypto king. All right. Love the see, brother. Bah! Deep entertainment. So, uh, yes. Love it, brother. See you, brother. Bang. What we got here? I don't know what all that means. Look, love it, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Edwin, the original. Love it, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Sloppy. Holding down the North insurgency. Love it, brother. See you, brother. Bang. The Phantom. What's he talking about? The phantom of the blockchain has struck again. The Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine has signed a memorandum with Intel Max UAE to create a platform for the exchange of intellectual property based on the phantom blockchain. What? 
Oh, that's a government contract then between the Ukraine and the UAE. Bang, phantom hodlers. Sloppy's been talking about this lately. Bah, all right. Good stuff. All right, Papa Doc. Love with the there. Bye. Announcement Binance. Binance staking launches ICX staking up to 21.79 APY. All right. So look. ICX hodlers. Bye. Go stake your stuff at Binance. I right. like the tweets. Like the tweets. All right. Let's just do it. KJ Gatsby, Lever with the Chief of the Bang. Justin Levina, Lever with the Chief of the Bang. Bitcoin Kong, <laughs> wow, yes. Lever with the Chief of the Bang. Where's everybody else, man? I don't even know these people. Crypto King, Bang. SWAT Golden Link. Link under 100 is a gift. Love with the Chief of the Bar. Me, taker of link. Stuffing things. <laughs> Love with the Chief of the Bar. Dilemma. Love with the Chief of the Bar. All right, that's good enough. All right, there's everyone there. All right, let's just do this from here then. Luke, technically bullish. Love with the Chief of the Bar. And then let us go to the Mish Grant pile. <laughs> Look, abundantly me. Love with the sea brother. Bang. Say hello to the kid. Deborah, love you girl, see you girl. Bang. Robbie Hardaway, love with the sea brother. Bang. Beautiful Brawlies, love you, lady, see you, lady. Bang. Bye, bleed it. Love you, brother, see you, brother. Bang. And kitty, bye, bleed it. Bang. Yes. What else we got? Wayne, one, two, three. Love with the sea brother. Bye. All right. Chief Visa. Oh, he changed it. What's his thing now? What is that? Homer Simpson? Oh, dreaming of V chain sitting on a pool. <laughs> yes. Chief Visa on the Pasqua Yaki tribe. V chain masters. Bang. V chain hodlers. Bang. V chain killers. Look, look. Love him, Chief. See you, Chief. Bang. Yes. Andrew Bacheta, Larry with the Chief of the Bang. And Sunny B, Spy Lady. Love you, Lady. See you, Lady. Bang. All right. Anyone else? That's everybody right there. That's good enough. Good enough. Let's get back to. Bye. Let's get back to the Death Star. Yeah, it was a quick show. Just a couple ETFs, really, and, a, and then that, that Facebook money thing. So. Yeah, a simple show, a slow news day, slow news day. No onboardings, no, you know, regulations anywhere or anything, our usual stuff. But uh, I'm sure we'll be back at it tomorrow, so let's check it out. So Evolve gets approval for the second Canadian Bitcoin ETF in one month. And so, like I've told you, the importance of ETFs, um, uh, people can make money off of Bitcoin without actually buying the Bitcoin. Um, they're on any trading platform you have at home, you're, you're, or if you're like a Masta, a hedge fund or whatever, it, it's going to be on your Bloomberg terminal. Um, uh, they take the Bitcoin off the market, uh, thus creating scarcity. Um, just good all around, good all around. Now, what I want to hear is how successful this thing is. You can offer an ETF, great. How many people actually buy it? And you, and you know. That's what I want to hear down the road. But new uh, ETF, Bitcoin ETF from Canada. Bah! And then NYDIG Bitcoin ETF applications. These guys are applying here in America now. That was Canada. Now this one's an American one. These guys are applying to have an ETF. And Morgan Stanley is backing it. So Morgan Stanley is going to do the selling of it and everything. And so that means you have the backing of Morgan Stanley's marketing department, right? Which is pretty much unlimited. <laughs> you know, they'll market it as much as they want. And so uh, this will be interesting if this one gets approved. Oh, yeah. This will be interesting shit. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. Again, it's just an application. 
since this channel, not one American ETF has been approved, and we've read many of them here, many, that, that gave it a shot and got, bang, shot down. So hopefully this one makes it. So, all right, that's all we can do is uh, just fingers crossed and we see how it goes. Bye. And then finally, DM close to launch and they have a payment structure. And so, yeah, they have a whole back end payment structure and everything, which is going to make it easy. So this is the Facebook money thing. It was called the Facebook Libra thing. Now it's called just DM. Um, and it looks like they have a whole payment system behind it. And they said that financial institutions can just get on it real easy and accept payments and stuff with this thing. And so uh, we're going to see, like I said, it was a slow news day. Normally I wouldn't read this shit because it, it just has nothing to do with our money because it's a stable coin, right? But, um, but whatever, it's Facebook, so it is mega, right? You know, Facebook has like, what, two point something billion uh, people that use it, right? So, right, this could either be something mega, right? This could be a total flop or something in between, and I think it'll be something in between. And so, we'll see. All right, so on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. So, subscribe below. Bang, press the bell. You'll get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the mall of the universe. Look, my name's Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Bang! Love talking crypto. Bang! This is the favorite time of my day. So thank you for having me in your home. And I'll see you all tomorrow for another fun fact day of crypto -ness. So until then, subscribe here. Whoop. Subscribe here. Bang! Watch that video there. Boom. And I will see you all tomorrow. Look, look, my name's Shamar Clark. And I am always on duty. Bye, watching our money. Till tomorrow. Yeah. Over and out.